We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is the Therapy Show Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to episode 166 of the Therapy Show Behind Closed Doors with the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones. And the title of this one is Empathy is the Oxygen of Successful Therapy. Well, that's certainly true. And as you said, 166, I thought, gosh, it won't be long before we're at 200. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's, that's amazing. I know I've supplied you with 14 or 15 or I mean, maybe 20 more titles. More so titles, that'll, yeah. That'll keep us going. Absolutely. And then I've got to think of a bunch more. Well, we've no plans on stopping, Bob. <laughs> yeah. I have to sit down. My, I close my eyes. And I think, oh, what can we talk about? And then I come to the top of it. And then I go back and check whether we've talked about them or not. So, um, but the most important thing is I close my eyes and I think, oh, what would I like to talk about? What could we talk about? It's a very creative process, you know. I can imagine. Do you remember what was going through your mind when you came up with this title? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, it's something that I believe very strong in, is that empathy is the glue as well as the oxygen. So I don't think there'll be many psychotherapy books or many psychotherapy schools that you could find where you, which which would not talk about empathy. So you'd have to go back. <clears throat> I've, I've, so I perhaps I need to say something about that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't mean in the last hundred and fifty years. So if we go back to psychoanalysis, yeah, okay. Well, way back in the last uh, early century with Freud and Jung and psychoanalysts, they didn't talk about empathy. But their type of therapy, which was very built on free association, um, you know, interpretation particularly. So it wouldn't be about empathic interpretation. It would be about confrontative interpretation. And it would be made from a one-up, one-down place. Yeah, empathy is much more in the world in the whole world of co-creation, uh, co sorry, co-creative psychotherapy and relational psychotherapy. It's a, it, 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 that word come that word has come around much later in the day. You know, in especially in the the world of relational psychotherapy. And actually, if you go back to the early fifties. In, in the world of one of the most famous uh, pioneers of therapy and counselling, Carl Rogers, who named empathy as one of his core conditions of effective counselling. So he, he did the person-centred counselling, didn't he? Yeah. Is that yeah. What, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said empathy was one of the core conditions uh, to have as a template for a therapist um, for effective psychotherapy. So... You know, I'm not sure he coined that term originally, but certainly, you know, he was a real, you know, devoutee of this core condition of empathy for therapy to work. So when you're talking about empathy in the therapy room, are you talking about the therapist having empathy towards the client in the Therapy yes, room. Right. that way around. Okay. What about the client having empathy with themselves in the therapy room? Do we model being empathic to the client? Yes, the answer, the short answer to that question is yes. Good. Through... Because empathy always comes with compassion. I talk a lot with my clients about being compassion with this, themselves. Mm. Mm. So a little bit more. Well, just, you know, when they do have a breakthrough or they change something, they, they usually then go straight to beating themselves up over it. Why have, Why has it took me so long to make this change and why have I not done this sooner or whatever it is? And at that point, I'll say to them, that is, you, we need to be compassionate. If we knew a better way of doing it, we would have done it. So you need to be compassionate with yourself. Mm-hmm. So the two for me come quite close together 
They do. They go together. Yeah. And one of the biggest problems in the psychotherapy and counselling world for psychotherapists and counsellors are the clients who have difficulty of being um, not only um, being empathic to other people, but most importantly, as you've just said, being empathic to their inner child. Yeah. So usually most clients are much more <clears throat> able to, unfortunately, um, say 10 things they don't like about themselves first before they can find things that they like about themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Are they, you're right. So a therapist needs to model compassion and needs to model empathy um, rather than any other any other. Uh, methodology i think yeah so how can we encourage that and, and why is that the oxygen of success because without that therapeutic change won't take place let's go you always ask three or four questions once. sorry let's, let's <laughs> go back to the first one <clears throat> when you talk about empathy and let's start with what we mean by empathy so here's a one to kick off with you jackie okay for you, what is the difference between empathy and sympathy? Sympathy is feeling sorry for somebody. Empathy is kind of being able to walk in their shoes or understand maybe more about how they're feeling rather than feeling sorry for them. Yes, and I completely agree. And I think you have to often um, not only think about that as therapists, but you need to be able to often say that to clients and also quite often when you talk to clients about the difference in empathy and sympathy they often say well sympathy if they know ta again sympathy often comes from the parent rather than you know and and, and then the client receives it quite often from a, a child you know, yeah. yeah right so I, yeah i like your definition um <clears throat> so empathy is far more uh, a co you know uh, bilateral yeah it's far more uh, walking as you've just said getting into their psychological skin yeah and it comes from an i'm okay you're okay place whereas sympathy for me comes from a i'm okay you're not okay position well, yeah often from a rescuing place yes yeah it would be perceived to be a rescuing place by the client yeah yeah so beyond um, another book, a book, really good book. Perhaps I'll talk about it later. It's called Beyond Empathy. But okay, so empathy is getting into the skin of the client or helping uh, that process. Empathy is also part of a relational process. That's what I meant by bilateral. Yeah, goes both ways. So it's a relational technique, and as with, as the relationship is really the focus effective psychotherapy in many ways it's very important um so that's why that's why i wanted to start there with empathy because somebody because there's a really big one often i experience this in supervision when the therapist is believing they're being empath empathic with their clients but actually after further discussion they might actually be coming from a place which they think is empathic, is actually more like sympathy. Yeah. So they confuse the two. Yeah, which sympathy, like you're saying, if that's a rescuing place, that's disempowering for the client. Uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so quite often I've had to teach the supervisees about what the difference is. Um. Uh, and even taught them how to how to, I even taught them what is empathic transactions opposed to some you know sympathy transactions. Yeah, yeah. So I've often had to teach that. Um so it's important we start, I think, with the difference between the two and say what empathy is. Yes. Um if you if you attune with what well, I you know accurate empathy, what happens is is the person, the client, the other person, feels heard, feels understood, and feels listened to. 
And there you've got the glue for relational psychotherapy. Yeah. Without that, without the client to feel listened to, understood, uh, without that compassionate transaction, they may well disappear, the clients. I mean, I don't mean physically. Yeah. I mean, go on the ground or feel judged or feel like repeating history. So that's what I mean by saying it's the oxygen of effective psychotherapy. Because if the other person feels understood, feels listened to, you know, feels that level of empathy, then they are going to be able to trust the other person. They're going to be able to feel safe with the other person. And it's only from that template they will open up and the effective psychotherapy is likely to happen. Yeah. That's what I mean by oxygen. It's like a lifeblood. Yeah. It's a lovely way of, of thinking about it. Because empathy, I think, is is <clears throat> one of the things that we as human beings have over other species. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Being able to look at things from somebody else's point of view and not necessarily feel the same way, but to have some understanding of how that might be for them. And it how yes, and how things impact them. Yeah. Mm. And there's a lot of books written on empathy. Uh, one of my mentors, Richard Erskine, has written a book on empathy called Beyond Empathy. Uh, where he, and it's a book really for, for therapists, training therapists in his School of Integrative Psychotherapy. But he, he and there's many vignettes of empathic transactions and how that fosters trust, safety and security in relational psychotherapy so they can feel able to be vulnerable, talk about their real challenges in life. And it opens up the space for that to happen. The opposite of that would be closed questions, which by definition often means a yes or no answer. Yeah. And by definition, the client may easily close down and there's no opening up of the space for further inquiry. So empathic questions open up that space for empathic inquiry. Questions, yeah. Empathic transactions where the person feels listened to, heard, they feel safe, they feel secure, they feel somebody really wants to know about them. Yeah. There's something for me keeps going through my mind as you're speaking about having a witness, something about somebody, when you're talking about understanding and listened to and being heard, that they've got a witness for how it was for them or how it is for them. Yeah. There's nothing more powerful, Jackie, I believe, than a than a empathic listener. Yeah. With an empathic listener, if 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 you get a therapist that is an excellent empathic listener, stay with them. Yeah. But will the, the client by definition will anyway, because they will feel safe, secured, being heard, being listened to. Maybe in a way they've never been listened to before. There's a, there's a skill to listening, isn't there? And I think a lot oh, of us right. think like we're good listeners, but the reality is no. we're not always, yeah. No. I mean, one of the first things you learn on any counselling course, by the way, and also on a psychotherapy course, is the whole skill of what is often called active listening. Yeah. Because in the world of active listening, it means... The counts that doing things like, you know, uh, asking what I would call inquiry questions, which open up the space um, to do things that show that they're listening. Yeah. Um, I could go speak a lot about that. And it's the same with empathy. Empathy, you need to be proactive in the empathic approach. In, in in showing you're empathic 
um, were asking inquiry questions, being involved in the psychotherapy, saying things like, could you say a little bit more about that? Yeah. Does that really mean for you? Those sort of empathic transactions will open up the space, not close it down. Yeah. So it becomes like the oxygen of the psychotherapy room. And without it, you will lose the client. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And I can see the 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 power of it in the room. It's like fanning the flames somehow, do you know what I mean? If there's oxygen there, it's it is gonna open up that space for that mm. connection and trust. Yeah. Oh, trust is a very big safety. Yeah. Security. Um in the TA world, Eric Byrne used to talk about what is called bullseye transactions, which you probably heard about. Yeah. So the idea that the transaction from the therapist would hit all the ego states at once. Yeah. In this case, we're talking about pair dad or child. I would call an empathic transaction a bullseye transaction. They're so powerful. I can I can specifically remember when I was in therapy myself and that happened. It's the mm. most powerful thing I've ever felt, I think. Mm. And, I, you know, a bullseye is a really good way of putting it in a nutshell. Yeah, it hit home and it hit deep and it hit hard. Yeah. Mm. And empathic transactions are bullseye transactions, I believe. Mm. now there's nothing written about putting those two together but i think they are i mean burn coined the term bullseye transactions i presume in, his, in the early 60s in his in his books we're now in 2024 and the idea from clarkson from erskine and many other writers about empathic transactions um but i think they are bullseye transactions yeah, that would make sense. Mm. Yeah. Very careful, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, if you're talking about all three ego states, being in the room, which they are at any point with us, being empathic and the, the trust and the openness that goes along with that, with all three parts mm. of us, yeah, it does make perfect sense. Yeah, and in the following through the met, the metaphor of oxygen, Empathic transactions help the clients breathe. Mm. Maybe the first yeah. time in their life. Yeah. To really breathe. Yeah. So another metaphor, I'm I'm mildly, but I'm asthmatic. And so I went to see my doctor the other day and said, Oh, for an asthma review. And that's oh, you've got these old fashioned uh sort of puffers you've got to have these new puffers with powder on instead of uh the gases because the powders are more environment environmental so anyway i i i got these new puffers in the other day and here's the here's the sort of metaphor i want to say so i take now i did before but i'm doing more diligently two puffs of the uh preventive asthma puffers and the steroids steroids by the way yeah and they relieve me i feel an opening up open yeah yeah and that's what i think meta that's what i think empathic transactions do they help open up the channel to a heart to heart transaction yeah so we should all practice a bit of empathy a bit more in all our relationships. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. If we're talking us, so definitely. It, it, definitely, definitely. But, you know, it's definitely the oxygen of a successful psychotherapy treatment. If if the client doesn't receive empathic transactions, um, their likelihood will be um, a repeat of history, probably, number one. And they'll close down. Yeah. 
And why would they not, if, if empathy means being understood and seen and heard, why would they not close down if that's not being offered in the therapy process? Well, here we go. You know about script theory, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you've, ever, if you've had a history of being defined by someone else, if you've had a history of believing that you're not as important as anyone else, of believing you have no value, of believing you're worthless, that's how you'll see the world. Yeah. If you meet a therapist who, and maybe for the first time in the psychotherapy room, is talking through empathic transactions and dialogue for the first time, it's a different world. Mm. So you might not believe it so easily because your script is, you're used to another way and a, new, a completely other dialogue. So it might take you a bit of time to trust and to believe in the empathy and the transactions and all goes with that. But that's where the oxygen will come from. Otherwise, the person just follows the suffocating script of self-definition yeah of negative narratives of diminishing returns yeah and that opening up as well if we can encourage that outside of the therapy room then every relationship is going to be better <laughs> Do you, do you yeah. think the, the, the clients inside the therapy room then take that outside and pass that on to others? The first step, Jackie, is passing it on to themselves. Yeah, true, yeah. No, seriously, uh, because if they pass it on to themselves, they're only in a child, and there's a real dialogue of meeting internally, they then will, will probably pass it on externally. They'll have the self confidence. Yeah. Be different. I believe. Yeah. That's the first of all. That empathic modeling, if they take that level of compassion and, and empathy into their own hearts and start um, giving oxygen to their inner child, which probably has suffocated for all these years, they're more likely to be different externally. And that's all about the inner child work that, that you and I have talked yeah. about many times. Yeah. 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 And empathy is absolutely instrumental to working with the inner child. And I think I think you're right. I think what you said right at the beginning of this podcast is empathy and compassion go together. Yeah. Yeah. A therapist that not only is empathic, but also has a compassionate attitude, would have phenomenal results in effective psychotherapy. Yeah. There's a lot of food for thought in this podcast, Bob, because it not only is it about, you know, showing it in the therapy room, but for me, it's about showing it with ourselves outside the therapy room. That means that we're oh, in a better place. Yeah, in the yeah therapy absolutely. Room. <laughs> That's why, that is why, if you've got a psychotherapy course of any decency, you'll be required to have your own therapy. Yeah. Because you're 100% correct. If you're empathic and, if you're empathic and compassionate to your own inner child, yeah. you'll make a wonderful therapist because you'll then start to be uh, able to be different externally with your clients. Yeah. Another good podcast, Bob. Thank you so much. I think it's a wonderful podcast. Uh, I, I don't mean in that any narcissistic way, but I meant the You'd be narcissistic, Bob. You carry on with that because all the these content. titles are yours. <laughs> I meant the content of what we're talking about because without compassion and without empathy, Effective psychotherapy won't happen. Yeah. yeah. It is all about that connection and that open space without yeah. being, yeah. you know, I Both. if I see a new client, they, they're very closed and protected when they come in. And the only way that you can sometimes break through that 
mm. is by being compassionate and empathic. Mm. It's not doing it with a sledgehammer. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So that's what I meant about this podcast. It's a very valuable podcast because the content uh, I really hope people can reflect on listening to this. And even as you're speaking, then you can't learn this stuff in a book, can you? You have to experience it. We can learn all the techniques and all the diagrams and all that sort of stuff. But this, you know, deep inner child work and when we're talking like this, that's not coming off the page of a book a lot of the time. No, it's not coming off the page of the book. It's hopefully coming from the opening up of the therapist's heart. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Oh, Bob, I've learned a lot from you. <laughs> oh, a lot from you. We, you, you, you uh, uh, provide a real template for these co-creative discussions. So I can only thank you for that. Well, do you know, I can only thank you, Bob. I think we're we're very open and compassionate and empathic with each other in this space. Well, I hope so. I hope so. What's so the... what we're going to be talking about next yeah, time yeah, yeah. is how many are there in the therapy process? <laughs> so I'm smiling to myself because when you said that, <laughs> that is something I often say to students, you know, when you're in a room, um, uh, therapists and clients, how many, how many people actually are present here and probably haven't paid for the tour absolutely <laughs> they're, they're getting it for free i love that <laughs> so I, I i can't wait to talk about it yeah so until next time bob thank you so much thank you bye 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 you've been listening to the therapy show behind closed doors podcast we hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.